What's up, change makers? It's now officially 2 2 22. We're into February of 2022. One twelfth of the year has gone already. How are you doing on your goals? Did you set New Year resolutions? Have you set out a whole plan for your life in 2022? Who knows? What I do know is that January the 19th is called Quitter's Day. <laughs> I'm sure you know why, but that doesn't have to be us. I don't care if you've already paused on your goals. What we're going to do today is reset. I'm going to show you how I plan. I'm going to show you some of the insights that have helped me and the people that I coach achieve some massive goals in their lives. And if you stick with me until the end, I'm going to show you how you can take one goal, one big goal, set it out, map it out and make it happen by the end of this year. So let's get started. So I'm really excited about this topic. I love planning. I love helping other people to achieve their goals. I love helping other people get into a lifestyle that they enjoy. And that's what it's all about today. It's not just about ticking off a list. But let's have a think about what's in a plan, whether that's a financial plan, a gap year plan, a plan for moving house, who knows what the plan is for. Let's have a think about what's actually in there. Well, it has an end point, doesn't it? It has an outcome point where we can look at it and say, yes, I did it. But it also has a breakdown. And if you're good at planning, it'll have some milestones to help you keep on track along the way. But a great plan has also got some dates. It's got some risks. It's given some thought to the contingencies that we have in place. It might have costs. It might have intermediate goals along the way otherwise known as milestones. But I don't care what system you use. You can use a paper planner for all I care. You could use the latest high-tech digital planner. Whatever you use, you're gonna see some of these key elements if it's gonna be a good plan. But even the best laid plans don't always achieve the outcomes that people are looking for. And that's what I wanted to discuss with you today because a lot of people set out with great intentions at the start of 2022. Maybe they joined a gym. Maybe they started walking every day maybe they started eating healthfully every day but as soon as the going gets tough the goal is abandoned why is that what is it about new year's resolutions that means that they're more likely to fail than help us achieve our life goals well the first reason is due to poor planning but we fix that one literally planning is just thinking about all those things and putting it down so you can look at it continuously but the second reason is people don't work hard enough on why they want to do things what's your motivation or as i like to call it your motive for action. When it's cold in the morning and you've got to get to the gym, what's going to motivate you to get out of bed? Working on that motivation is critical because otherwise, as soon as it gets tough, people give in. So recognize that it's just a part of human nature. Whether it has to be a part of the way that you operate is entirely up to you. But if that is your experience, give it some thought. Can I get greater clarity on why I want to achieve this goal? And another quick reason people don't achieve their goals is that they don't set in place any rewards or indeed any incentives. Rewards aren't just something that we do for other people. Think about rewarding yourself. What are you going to give yourself if you do this thing for a whole week? What are you going to do for yourself if you achieve it after a whole month or a whole year? The goal in itself is very rarely enough. So give it some thought. What treat can you award yourself? So what is the solution? Well, this is something I've been doing for years and something I've shared with my clients too. It also happens to be in dynamic time management. Have you got your copy yet? See, setting goals is only part of what I do. What's much more important is setting up a whole life system. And it all comes back to the why. Why am I trying to achieve certain things right now? Why am I setting up meetings, talking to people, putting in place plans and strategizing on how things are going to be different? Well, the main reason is because one of my goals is to develop a million change makers, people who want to go out there and help others. So that's my why when I'm sitting down and thinking about what am I going to do next? And I've just touched on there the second element of solving the problem, solving the riddle, if you like, of what it takes to put in place a plan of action and that is some time to think. Very rarely do we do good thinking. Do we give ourselves time to sit and reflect and imagine? But if you're putting together a solid plan, you've got to do a lot of thinking. What are the risks? What are the things that might get in the way? Who's going to need to help? What sort of time frame is realistic for the things that you want to achieve right now? How much effort is it going to take? Will you need to source some funding? All of those things 
take time to think about. And so the second part of the system is think. And the third part is break it down. The old saying, I don't even know if I like it anymore. What's the best way to eat an elephant? One chunk at a time. Well, maybe there's other things that we can eat. What's the best way to eat a huge vat of beans? One spoon at a time. <laughs> but we need to break it down. I can't actually develop a million change makers today, but I can break that down into some smaller steps that ensure that I can do something meaningful today. And when I'm doing that step, I know that it's linked to the bigger picture. And so that step itself will feel great too. So break things down is step three. And then step four is build it up. <laughs> Sometimes we break things down and we say, right, this is the bit that I need to focus on next. But to do that thing, I need to build up some habits. I need to build up some backbone in terms of the way I'm gonna apply myself to this. I'm gonna to need to give it consistent daily effort. So I'm building up habits is the fourth step. So if you've stuck around this long, congratulations. You now have everything you need to go out there and smash your goal list for the rest of 2022. Whatever you thought about at the start of January, pick it back up, have a look at it and think, have I done enough on the motivation? Have I thought through the planning stages enough? Have I worked out what's my why and how this contributes? Have I broken it down sufficiently so that I've got incremental steps that are gonna get me there? And then have I thought through how I'm gonna build up some habits to make it happen? All of those things will reinvigorate your goals and give you a much better chance of achieving them. But let's just come back to one goal. I want you to imagine one thing that if you did it this year, you would be hugely proud of. So for me, last year, it was dynamic time management. That was the goal I was setting myself almost above all else. There were lots of things I was doing. There were lots of things on my list of achievements that I was looking to do last year, but the book was the one that I really focused in on. And I want you to take one thing that if you can do it this year, you're gonna be super proud of. What I'd like you to do is write that thing in the comments below. And then let's look back together at the end of 2022 and see how we did. So here's the process and it's gonna be a little bit different. The first thing I want you to do is think about what is the one thing that you would love to achieve this year? So that's the first thing we're doing. We're thinking about it. We're prioritizing, we're deciding. In that process, we're gonna attach some emotion to the thing that we're gonna choose. And once you've thought about it, I want you to sit back and I want you to dream about it. I want you to imagine that it's already done. I want you to live in that space where you've already achieved that goal. What does it feel like? How do you feel? How are people talking about it? What can you hear? They say you can taste success. So what does this success taste like? Create a vivid picture in your head. And if you can't imagine things like that, I want you to sit quietly and write a bunch of things. Write some words down that you can attach to the goal that you're setting. And then I want you to live there for a while. I don't want you to do anything about it, but I want you to live in that space where you've already achieved your goal. And I want you to start talking to yourself as if it is already done. So many of you will have heard about manifesting and affirmations. This is just a very simple approach to that. Sit down, talk about it as if it's already done. That's your affirmation. So throughout the year, when you're facing some challenges or some setbacks to your goal, when things are getting a bit tough, read your affirmation, go back in your head and live in that space once again where it's all done and do that as quickly as possible to get out of that rut. And once you've done that for a couple of days, I then want you to start to take action. Break it down. What's the first thing you can do? What are the milestones? What does success look like by the end of February 2022? By the end of March 2022? What are the milestones? And what are the daily habits you're gonna to want to build up to start to eat into that goal. So if you can do all that, I can guarantee you, you will achieve this major goal by the end of the year. So as I said, share it in the comments below and I look forward to reviewing them with you at the end of the year. For now, check out the next recommended video because I'm sure it will help you think a little bit differently about what you're doing and help you on your road to becoming that great change maker. Have a great week.